Hello, everyone. Welcome to another week of Beyond Education Early Childhood Weekly Bye. Last week, we looked at the definition of well-being and how well-being is the engine room of your work and your private life. I elaborated this further with the help of an imaginary scale. So everyday life events moved us along this scale, either towards the burnout end or towards the well-being end, depending on how we respond to these events. Today, I would like to highlight the importance of emotions and what are some hindrances to expressing emotions and finish up by providing some helpful ways to build vocabulary of emotions that you and I need in our day-to-day -day lives. As I touched on in last week's video that your emotions are like alarm bells within you. So if you feel safe and secure, you are very likely to be flourishing and delighting and being very happy in the environment. But likewise, if you are feeling quite uncomfortable, you are insecure or that you are worried in that situation, you're very likely to be retracting and um, going into your shelf in that situation. Now, I want to discuss what are some hindrances to um, our expression and um, experience of um, our full emotions. So you and I all have a cultural background. I don't know about you. For me, um, I come from a Singaporean Chinese background. So um, our culture tells us that um, some emotions are good and some are bad. So when I was growing up, being happy and excited and surprised are um, emotions that, that we are able to share publicly. But on the other hand, there are some emotions that we have been taught from young that are not acceptable um, in a public space. For example, chucking a tantrum, being upset, feeling embarrassed as a parent, um, you know, when your children are misbehaving, those sort of things. I know that in each culture, every one of us would have our culture taboo when it comes to um, emotions. And likewise, there are some gender bias. You know, we um, perhaps been told the boys growing up that, you know, um, not to cry because crying's for girls. And I think we need to start to realize those baggage and culture bias that we have um, as we deal with our emotions and as we are um, bringing that to the forefront of our work and trying to objectify um, the emotions and see and pass them through these this filters of bias to see what is coming through and what is hitting the wall to understand and realize why are we feeling stuck. Let me provide you with an example that you might be very familiar with. So you might have a student that's in your class that often has outbursts of anger. Um, that child might seem like um, he or she has an anger issue and deals with every issue um, by expressing anger. Now, I think in that scenario itself, when you take a step back and have a look at this child, the child probably has one prominent expression of, um, of their emotions and that is anger. And that comes through in different things. Maybe when the child is frustrated with um, not being able to write his name or that he or she's embarrassed or he or she doesn't um, get a chance to go on the swing um, when the other child hops off. I think it's important for us to look um, beyond these layers of emotions to understand um, the, the, the bigger picture or the stronger emotions that is happening um, underneath that anger. Let me give you another example that might relate to you as an early childhood teacher. So all of us or many of us are working in an early childhood setting that perhaps have some shift works and um, maybe you are, it's your turn to have an early shift or a mid shift, whatever shift that might look like. And the director has decided to um, allocate that shift to somebody else who has been already having that shift for two to three weeks in a row. And you are really needing that shift so that you can actually get some errands run in your home. And you are just feeling so, you know, you can feel in the blanks, frustrated, upset, perhaps disappointed. Um, you are in disbelief. Um, and you, you've got this range of emotions that you are feeling that you would like to express. But maybe what you are doing is um, holding it in and trying to rationalize a way of, um, 
you know, giving reasons for why that person is getting the shift the second to third time in a row versus you who's been waiting for a long time. And you've got a choice to either um, be raising this in a professional and healthy way or to be just bearing it. So it's the fight or flight kind of reflex when you come to situations like this. And um, I want to discuss and talk a little bit further about some healthy ways to um, take you to the next step when you're feeling that you are stuck in that situation. Because now that you are more aware, you are actually accepting of that feelings you are allowing yourself to experience that instead of fighting it and then it's very likely that you're going to start to reflect and come up with really good strategies to help you move ahead in this journey so in in this um, week's little exercise i would like you to grow your vocabulary in the areas of your the range of emotions that you have maybe like me um you know in a, f a couple of years back you only have the very um simple and positive um, emotions as i could call them um you know that is on the very happy mood side and you rarely have any um, emotions and vocabulary that is being established on the other end so I would like to even start you off um, with some I've got on my notebook here. And you might want to look at some of the links that I provide at the end of this video to get you started um, with a chart of emotions that you might want to start using and building into your everyday vocabulary. So just to start you off um, on the very good and happy emotions, because we all like to be on the good well-being side, um, you can think of words like this, that you are feeling calm, that you're feeling free. I think those are really great feelings. You're thrilled about something, something that's coming up on the weekend or that um, your service is, um, you know, that you, the team has worked really hard and you've got an exceeding rating for your service. So well done to you. Or you're feeling satisfied about the thing that you've been working hard on. It might be something that you're working at that is your college work, your uni work, and you're very happy and proud of it and you're feeling satisfied. Now, on the other hand, um, you might be feeling irritated, like in that scenario that I have um, raised earlier, that it should be your turn to get that shift that would actually help you to run errands. You don't really understand why that you did not get that. And you might be doubtful. You're doubtful about your relationship with the director. You're not sure if something has happened and, you know, why haven't you been given that shift? Um, and on top of that, you might be feeling inferior to the person who's been given that, that shift and um, you haven't been given that. And oh, definitely you're feeling miserable. You're feeling like not understood and that maybe you're thinking that you're not good enough. But I just want to encourage you that you are more than enough okay and you turning up for work and every day just doing your day-to-day -day life being a student being a mom being a, a, an educator in an early child space you are just being amazing so i just want to encourage you that every day as you turn up and as you determine as you now that you are more aware of this space of how to actually stay well that as you take little steps towards um, building on your well-being i like to hear your stories to hear how you are beginning to open up and how um, these um, little short videos are helping you to even just open your mind to um, the idea of building towards well-being i'd love to see you in our next episode join me again next week bye <music>